All right. Difficulty, super easy. Difficulty, super easy. Single story, and then pick up. Somehow it's more broken than me. Yes. Well, you're finished. This isn't. Well, I guess you're not finished, but. I don't know. What's a finished human? A dead human? Let's get existential. Why not? This is run attempt, what, number five? So we had. The first two broke. The third one got interrupted. Uh, the fourth one also got... Oh, no, so the first two broke because there was no enemies that spawned. The third got interrupted by my dad coming over and being like, Hello, fish! And then the fourth one crashed. So we're on attempt number five. <laughs> Let's go! A human that got hit with a tank round. Is that a completed human? I feel like that's a deconstructed human. What the hell is happening here? I have released you from your prison. Sure. Sorry, I don't have much to say. I feel like we ran out of conversational topics. What is going on with that? Uh, <laughs> that model there was having a stroke. Kind of ran out of conversational topics because you know we've been through freaking four of these runs at this point. How much else I can say? I just be kind of repeating like a broken record. Tickling toes like Cotton Eye Joe. Hey, baby. Oh shit. Hey, baby, don't you see that I want you to be my world? I hate when that when I get a new weapon ready, it auto-switches it to the, the weapon of choice. Still waiting for that demon cow story? I guess I could tell that. That's like a whole, that was like a long time ago. I'm 26 now, so that story's like over a decade old. Jesus, I'm an old man. Hey, baby, won't you see? I guess I could try to tell it i don't know there's just a lot of context that i have to think of that's kind of like, that's gonna kind of like split my brain in half type deal i thought about doing story time videos for my second channel i don't know what i want to do with it now that i'm not doing the photoshop stuff for it i'm just trying to think like i want to try to do essay stuff but my brain is broken and made of cheese jesus don't you start spamming your special you actual jack nugget you lightning thunder waffle no 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 So, uh, Mr. Beast, am I ready? <laughs> Hello, Starbean. Starbean, you should be- Oh my god, no! You lightning thunder slight! God fucking damn it! Ah, I dropped my phone! <sighs> of course, we can't have a run without Mr. Slam Slam, thank you, ma'am, touching my tacos. Mr. Beast is the whole thing. I mean, I'm not surprised. I'm not gonna go, like, too much into it, but, I mean, I'm just not surprised. I don't think there's, like... <sighs> I'm not going to say there's no good YouTubers, but I don't know. I think the moment I at least surmised something was a little off, that that the moment that we're like, like, I never thought he was truly like YouTube's golden boy, but the moment that I was a little like, hmm, like a little chin waggy about it was uh, a very specific, very niche thing. Ah, I just sneezed and felt my teeth move. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, so, like, I would say the first moment, I can probably pick up my phone here, I, the first moment for Mr. Beast's thing that I was like, hmm, this is a little, a little weird, a little, there's, there's something under the surface here that's not so fresh, um, was, this is way, way, way back when, and this is gonna be super specific and just anecdotal as hell, but, um, yours truly worked for Wally World once upon a time. I got fired from Walmart because a homeless man obsessed with, well, I say he was homeless, I guess just like a random guy that was obsessed with it. Crash Bandicoot assaulted me uh, while I was trying to go back inside Walmart during the night. I was a night shift janitor, and they lost the key to the trash compactor, so I had to take the trash bins in, out, and around, and trying to go back in. Um, he pushed me, I pushed him, we're a happy family, whole thing, right? 
whole story I think I've told before once or twice maybe but uh, I've worked for Wally World and I understand this concept uh, that is now lost in my brain what the fuck is it called um, zoning there we go it's called zoning so zoning is a thing in a lot of supermarkets and a lot of stores which uh, it's just a fancy word for basically uh, make, maintaining a, a uh, maintaining an aisle and looking, making it look nice so there is actually a name and there's an actually like a concept uh, of making an aisle not look like absolute, like a disaster. Like if you ever go down like a, a, a grocery store's uh, product aisle and it looks nice and neat, there's a term for that. It's called zoning. You zone a, uh, uh, an aisle to make it look nice and neat and presentable. And uh, yeah. So the reason why I bring this up, even though it seems like a complete non sequitur, is because... Uh, Again, this is anecdotal as shit, but the first time I was kind of like, ooh, Mr. Beast is a little, this is a little off-putting here. He seems a, little, a tad bit disconnected from reality. Is he, I don't know if it was like, I forget what it was. It was like candy or snacks or something, but he was launching some sort of product, right? And he put out a tweet saying, hey, um, you know, we'll give out money to people who go around and try to make the shelves look nice. And basically trying to encourage the the public, the average Joe Blow schmo, especially someone that might be a fan of him, to basically go out and, like, do work for free. Essentially, if they see his, like, if they see his, uh, you know, section in a store, just do, do, do him a favor and clean it up. And if they send him a picture of them, like, putting in the effort to make one of his, like, product sections looks nice, they would have a chance to win, like, ten grand. And I'm like, when I saw that, I'm like, dude, store workers get paid real money to do this shit like this is an actual task this is an actual part of their job the fact that some random jackass could potentially make 10 grand from Mr. Beast for one of the easiest jobs you can get as a part of an overall other arcing job is insane the fact that you could possibly get a life changing amount of money just by, you know, casually cleaning up and making a, a product section look nice is absurd. Like, just go to a random worker and be like, like, hey, I saw you did this for me as a part of your normal duties. Here's 10 grand. Like, why does it got to be some random schmuck? Or, you know, I don't know. That just bothered the piss out of me where it's like, that opened my eyes where it's like, you know, Mr. Beast is just making people dance for money and do stupid shit for money. Like, casually clean up his product section and make it look nice and it's a here's the thing right it's a chance to win and it's one person you'd be like if you send this in you have it will pick a random person who does this so he would have hundreds if not thousands if i don't know how many people doing free labor free work for him to make his sections look nice and it's also going to cause a whole bunch of an issue because you know you're going to have people who are shitters who are then going to go try and fuck up just to be like trolls to be like a meme right they're going to go fuck up these sections and then take pictures of it and probably send it to Mr. Beast on Twitter and be like, hey, look what I did. And now there's more work being created for wage slaves who are just trying to do their job and go home. Like, basically, he's put all of this all of this unnecessary attention on his product line and probably caused a headache for how who knows how many people. Because uh, contrary to popular belief, store management doesn't want, like, customers helping with shit. They have, mo they have modules, and they have a mod team, and they have a bunch of different resources in place to have a source store set up exactly how they would like it. They don't actually like people going and fucking with shit. They don't want people zoning or putting products back. They would literally prefer you just put it on a shelf somewhere and leave it alone. Why? Because employees are expected, if they just find a random item somewhere, to just put it back. If you don't want something, just stick it on a shelf. Yeah, it's annoying, but store management 90% of the time would prefer you just do that because they don't want random customers fucking with shit. Um, uh, I don't know what other stores call it. Albertsons, they didn't even have a name for it. The managers just did it. Um, but in, at Walmart, it's called Mod. It's a, a module, right? The store is divided up into modules. It's divided up into different zones, different modules, different displays, and things like that. And they have two teams, at least the Walmart I worked at, Mod Team 1 and Mod Team 2. And then you had, or sorry, no, wait, I'm getting that wrong. They had three teams. They had mod, they had the mod team, and then they had cap one and cap two. The mod team was uh, comprised of miscellaneous managers and cap one. 
Cap 2 were the team, which I was actually on that team in Michigan. That sucked. Cap 2 is essentially the team that unloads the trucks and stocks. So they're like a, in some stores, depending on the store, they're like a stalker unloader hybrid. Other stores have a happy mix between dedicated stalkers and dedicated Cap 2. It's a whole thing, right? But they're the a store generally has an idea of how they want shit and they really just don't want random people messing with the ecosystem because it causes a whole lot of issues um you know they you have people moving shit around or organizing stuff or you know most people don't know the feng shui of how the store wants their shit to be displayed and you might have some dumb kids like move an entire bunch of stuff like I remember I actually read a thing where a bunch of kids moved a bunch of Mr. Beast merchandise to the bun to the front of a store, and like that store then had to go unfuck that whole thing. It's just it's just a lot. And so to roll back to why this made me you know get an inkling that there was something up with Mr. Beast is that essentially for the just possible opportunity for getting you know a life changing amount of money, people had to do work like actual work you could just go get a job and be paid for and i just i don't know i always thought that was a little strange like people who are just like ding 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 you know they ring a bell a metaphorical bell and they're like all right dirty peasant do this arbitrary thing i don't want to do and i will give you a bucket of money <laughs> like it's very aristocratic and weird in my opinion uh then he also said some smug junk like if some of you move the hershey's chocolates away so my chalk has more room i wouldn't complain yeah like that kind of shit like don't do that that's what i mean stores don't want you touching shit like that you're just you're making wage slaves lives harder stop that like I, i'm sure he said it as a joke right but just don't don't touch don't go into stores and start fucking with shit you're just making other people's lives harder for no gain like I, like I said, mod teams and stores generally... Like, Walmart, they have an idea of where they want their shit. Or at least they're supposed to have an idea of where they want their shit. If you go and you move it, some manager is either going to do it or some manager is going to make some poor wage slave do it. And you're making more work for a random person that just wants to get through the day and go home. And now they got to deal with whatever thing you did by being a goober for your favorite YouTuber. And by the way, everything we've talked about here isn't even, like, the whole, like, kit and caboodle. I've seen some of the videos that came out the other day about, like, the accusations and the stories and all that. I'm not going to get into all that because it's depressing. And the beginning of the stream was already super de depressing, but I digress. Just kind of, I don't know, let people do their jobs and go home. <laughs> don't, don't unnecessarily make someone's life harder than it needs to be. Think before you do, electric boogaloo. Do not be a shitling. <laughs> Ever since I've introduced that term to the moth, I knew... Who oh, hey! I knew he enjoyed it. Uh, pause. There we go.